what are we get out of it? The deceased is one George A. Winters. He's the CEO of this company, Zomco Industries, a leader in zombie defense products. Now, who would want to kill George Winters? Zombies. What is it, boss? Malone. Sam Malone. The washed up PI? Yeah. Don't close the book on this one yet, fellas. Hey, boss, we got another body down in the lab. Yeah, that's me, Sam Malone. PI business had been a little slow. Down on my luck? Yeah, a little bit. I used to take any case to make a buck. Blackmail, lost children, divorce, really anything. I have only one rule. I won't take any case involving zombies. I don't do zombies. Fifteen years I followed that rule, but then she walked in. I should have known she was trouble from the minute I first laid eyes on her. Could have been the fact that I hadn't had a real job in six months, but there was something about her. Or maybe it was those long legs that went on forever. Mr. Malone. Who's asking? Mr. Malone, my name is Veronica Winters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rough night, Mr. Malone. What do you want? Well. I heard that you were the best, but perhaps I heard wrong. Look, Miss. Veronica Winters. Miss Winters. It's actually Mrs. Winters. Who's the lucky guy? Mr. Malone, I do believe that my husband is having an affair with another woman. Well, that would be his loss. <sighs> You see, Mr. Malone, my husband is a very powerful man. He owns Zomco Industries. The Zombie Defense Company? Mr. Malone, the Zomco Corporation brings in over one million dollars in tax revenue to the city coffers every year. I think it only fair that, should we decide to amicably dissolve our relationship, I should receive a fair settlement. Of course, for all your emotional distress and such, Miss Winter, Mrs. Winters, I would love to help you out with all that you've been through, but I simply don't take zombie cases. It's just a rule I follow. <laughs> Who said zombies? My husband is the CEO of the largest corporation in Elgin. Yes, he makes product that fights off zombies. That doesn't mean that you will be battling zombies. Besides, here's my $100 retainer fee. Hmm? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. I don't know what made me take the case. Those long legs, the empty bottle of bourbon, an empty bank account. But here I was, staking out her husband's every move the next morning. Well, well, well. What do we have here?
All right, what do you want? Easy, pal. I'm just out for a leisurely stroll. I don't want to hear it. You guys, you're all the same. Look, there must be some misunderstanding. I don't want to hear it. If you tell Mr. Holden the day I sell Zomco Industries to him, it'll be over my dead body. Well, what was that all about? It was time to pay a visit to the dame he had just been chummy with. Can I help you? Is that Marilyn Miller? In the flesh. What show is this? The end of Broadway as we know it. Huh? Some zombie musical. It's bad enough we gotta fight these things in real life in this city. But now we gotta put music to it and then call it art. I call it a travesty. What do I know? So, what do you think? So I'm thinking this would be a great spot for, for Mother. Miss Miller? Who's asking? Ray, take five. Yes, Miss Miller. So what can I do for you, Mr. Malone. Sam Malone. Private investigator. Investigator? Do you know a Mr. Winters? Mr. Malone, what's this about? Do you know a Mr. Ted Holden? Look, Mr. Malone, I'm very busy getting ready for this show. Yes, I apologize. The show must go on. Tell you what. If you think of anything, give me a call anytime. Break a leg. Something rattled her cage when I said Mr. Holden. What was this dame involved in? Sam Malone. Just didn't know I'd find you here. Detective Murphy. Wonderful seeing you here. Word around town is that you've been harassing George Winters. Who? Don't play coy with me. Whatever do you speak of? Look, Malone, I'm not bailing you out this time. Zonko Corporation is really important to this town, and they're on the verge of a major discovery. Might even become the biggest company in the Midwest. I don't know who hired you or what you're up to, but we don't need some two-bit private dick messing things around. So I got some advice for you. Back off. Hit me again. Mr. Malone. What a surprise seeing you here. Having a late night camp? Any leads so far? Maybe. Mm. <laughs> You're awful chipper. Well, I'm just ecstatic that I hired the best P.I. this side of the Fox River. Look, Mrs. Winters. Oh, please, Sam. Call me Veronica. Oh. <laughs> Any photos for me? <laughs> oh. You're good, Sam. <laughs> well, can I get my photos, let's say, next week? And here's a little something for the rush delivery. Bye, Sam. I didn't like this. I was being played by multiple women. Why was Mrs. Winter so eager for me to take this case? She obviously didn't care if her husband was having an affair. What about Miss Miller? How did she fit into this whole mess? Marilyn? Mrs. Winters? Oh, please. Call me Veronica. Thank you so much for helping me. Think nothing of it. Now, did you give that packet to my husband? Yes, although he did seem a bit distracted. Oh, he's just busy. Now, if these headshots don't get you noticed, well, then nothing will. 
Do you think? Absolutely. And remember, us girls gotta stick together. <laughs> and at your first premiere, I expect a front row seat. Yes, Mrs. Winters. <laughs> All right, Dr. Johnson, what is it? Look, Mr. Winters, I have something to show you. Where am I? What's your name? Doug. D Doug Brady. Where am I? Mr. Brady, you had a viral, vicious disease that turned you into a zombie. I have cured you. What? Doctor, you just earned your stock in this company. Do you have the formula? I'm gonna keep this in a safe place. Veronica, my dear, what a lovely surprise. Darling. I have some excellent news. What is it? Remember when I told you that the lab was close to an amazing breakthrough? Yes. Oh, now we're even closer. This could change our society forever. <sighs> That's wonderful. I was thinking we might celebrate tonight at Mort's Steakhouse. Just you and me. That sounds lovely. But I do need some time to freshen up and change. Oh, that's perfect. I have a few things I need to finish up here. I'll send a car to pick you up. Shall we say seven? All right. Hello. Mr. Malone, did you hear my package? Miss Miller? Meet me at the Crocker Theater in an hour. I've got more to tell you. Miss Miller. you to back off, Malone. Grab his gun. This has not been fired. Sam, what are you doing here? I came to check out the rehearsal, but nobody told me it was canceled. Cute. I could bust you on suspicion alone. What's your connection to Miss Miller? None. She called me. Yeah. You're quite the ladies' man. All right, uncuff him. But... I said uncuff him. But I'm warning you, Sam, you're getting dangerously close to pushing all my buttons. Honey! Yeah, it's me! I did it! This is big, yep. How about a night of dinner and dancing? Yep, put on your best dress. I'll see you at 8 o'clock. Love you too. Bye. Who are you? What are you doing here? No!
Well, here we are, back to where we started. This is where I get to redeem myself. All the drunk tank jokes, the mocking, and now I get to put this mess all together in one neat little package. Malone, what do you think you're doing? Bringing in Mrs. Winters for the murder of Miss Marilyn Miller, scientist Dick Johnson, and her husband, George Winters. Sam, George Winters was killed by zombies. Not so fast, Detective Murphy. Yes, he was eaten by zombies, but only after Mrs. Winters hit him with a crowbar. Then she let the zombies have their evening feast. How do you know that? Miss Winters, I mean Mrs. Winters, hired me last week to find some dirt on her husband. She claimed he was having an affair. So? Well, I thought it was going to be a typical blackmail case. Get a few significant incriminating photos, and she settles with a big alimony. But something didn't sit right with me. Like what? After a little digging, I find out Mrs. Winters has been married before. Two times, to be exact. And wouldn't you know, her two husbands didn't, let's say, meet with the best fate. Two unsolved cases, two different states. I guess the third time's a charm. Wow, talk about a dangerous day. But you said she killed Marilyn Miller, too. She did. Marilyn Miller was never having an affair with George Winters. She was dragged in by Ted Holden, who was using her. Apparently, they had a past relationship that didn't go so well. Only Miss Miller didn't have a choice to end it. Ted Holden was blackmailing Miss Miller. Poor Miss Miller was just looking to break into the movies. George Winter's brother is a producer at StarCraft Pictures. She hoped he would make a phone call for her. How does that have anything to do with Veronica Winters? You want me to go first? I got this doll face. Mrs. Winters was slowly bleeding George Winters for every penny for the short time that they were together. He just never knew. When I first tagged George Winters, he thought I was one of Ted Holden's henchmen. He gave me an envelope from Miss Miller. She thought she was giving mild shots on a bio to George Winters. Inside, it was compromising pictures of Marilyn George. Mrs. Winters did a little envelope switch on Marilyn without her realizing. One of Ted Holden's goons had slipped something into Mr. Winters' drink one night at a bar, and they forced Miss Miller to take pictures with him passed out. Those were the pictures that Mr. Winters saw. And that was the night we saw you by the body. But why would she kill Marilyn Miller if they weren't really having an affair? Who knows? Jealousy? Tying up loose ends? Or more likely so she couldn't talk? Marilyn Miller had tipped me off about Veronica Winters. That was the night at the Crocker Theater. Mrs. Winters made sure that she couldn't finish the story. So what about Ted Holden? The Zomrid Corporation wasn't a real company at all, and a trip to the empty warehouse proved that. Ted Holden was having an affair with Mrs. Winters, and she was slowly embezzling funds from the Zomco Corporation. They were trying to assemble a nice little nest egg and retire to the Cayman Islands. And you said she killed the scientist too? She did. She thought she was disposing of the formula for good, not realizing that Mr. Winters had already safeguarded the actual recipe. And here's the thing. Mr. Winters had just signed the largest contract in history with the government for $850 million. Mrs. Winters would have been sitting pretty if she would have taken a simple divorce settlement. Well, I guess this all ends good for the world. But why would she even have hired you if she didn't want to get caught? Well, I'd like to think it's because I'm so charming or my devilishly good looks. But the reality is I was a diversion. She needed time to slow down the investigation. When I first met Mrs. Winters, she took one of my business cards and she slipped it into the jacket of Mr. Winters' suit. I believe that's the card you found. She needed just enough time to pack her bags and be hopping on a plane under an alias name. Only I was a few minutes ahead of her. Isn't that right, Doc? You don't know me! <laughs> oh, sweetheart, I think I know you better than you know yourself.
I don't think she'll be running away anymore. Sam Malone, where do we find Ted Holden? Oh yeah, send your men down to the Pier 4 by the river. I think you'll find him impatiently waiting there. She was supposed to bring the tickets. <laughs>